All right. Hello and welcome to episode three of our LinkedIn audio series brought to you by Sports Kida, Business of Sports and SportsCourses.com. I'm Arup Sones and our topic for today is a really interesting one, cricketing tales and career dreams. Our guests are two well-accomplished individuals in the field of sports business. But today, we're, we're really excited to talk about each of their most recent books. Neil Shah, author of Your Dream Career, and Joy Bhattacharya, the great Indian cricket circus, which has been co-authored alongside Abhishek Mukherjee. Neil and Joy, amazing to have you both with us. Thank you, Arup. It's so good to be here. Joy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with you. Um, this is obviously not your not your first uh, uh, rodeo, so to say, and and you've you've written multiple books and 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 pretty much uh, on cricket. Tell us a little bit about this one. This one feels different. It seems different. I mean, I'm really excited to get my hands on it. Tell us how. What's the inspiration? And and tell us a little bit about uh, the journey of this particular one. Hey, good evening, everybody. Lovely to hear your voice again, Arup. And hi, lovely to see you hear you there, Neil, as well. Uh, yeah, Arup, this was a very different journey. This was about uh, about a year and a half back. Uh, I had a very good friend uh, who at that time was in HarperCollins. And we were talking about books. She was a senior editor there. And she said that, what would you really like to write about if you had a completely open mandate? You could write about whatever you wanted to and have fun doing it. Because she said, write a book. And I said, look, I'm too busy. So she says, why don't you have fun writing a book? And <laughs> So I said it'll be a book just about the fact of how cricket touches almost every part of our lives. And that's how this book really came about. This book was actually written with that in mind, bearing the fact that this is not just about, it was about just how many from the fans to the stats to the crazy kind of players who played for India, the kind of amazing venues, crazy, very, very fascinating tournaments that used to be held at one time. So all that put together in one book, that's how it came about. It was just... You know, all the great stories that I had find to find one place to keep all those stories. And that this is the repository. And that's why it's called the Great Indian Cricket Circus, because it has like, you know, high wire acts. It has the clowns. It has, you know, it has the main performance. It has the tigers. It has everything. You know, this I, I, I'm, I'm just just hearing you. I'm, I really... Uh... Uh, I, I mean, I can't get to, I can't wait to get into some of those stories. So quick one, Joy. So this, I mean, you, you've said the great Indian cricket circus. The, so the, what's the time span like that you've covered? If, if I may ask, is it like, I mean, it, I mean <laughs> it's, it's all of cricket. I mean, it's, 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 it's all of, uh, it's all, it's complete Indian cricket as in, uh, you know, we have Swami Vivekanand in the book as well. Amazing. Uh, right up to 21st century, right up to 2022. So, you know, 2023 for that matter. Amazing, amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to jump a little bit uh, more into detail on that. But Shah, uh, Neil, I'm going to um, quickly uh, jump to you to to tell us a little bit about yours. I know the, the focus is is a bit different, but uh, introduce us to the book and its core message and, and, and how did it uh, come about? Yeah, thank you, Arup, and uh, great to hear about your book, Joy. It sounds it sounds fun already. I gotta get my hands on it. Um, you know, the book is called Your Dream Career: How to Choose the One That Fulfills You. Pretty self-explanatory in a lot of ways. Um, it's it's about understanding your your passion, your your superpowers, or your strengths and your purpose, and you know how do you bring those together to start to pretty much create a compass that's going to direct your career pathway. And it's very, you know, focused on the importance of self-awareness, on the focus on um, listening to your own inner voice as you start to, um, you know, pave your career pathway. And it really, it kicked off for me back in, um, I think it was 2017, I was in Pune and I was invited to do a TEDx youth uh, talk and they wanted me to talk about sports. And I just felt like, um, you know, while it was such a great honor to get to be a, a TEDx speaker, it was my first time at that point, I didn't feel comfortable just talking about sports because there might have been a lot of people in that room who don't, you know, connect with sports as passionately as, as, as I do and maybe a few others. So I thought, you know what, let me, let me change it up. Let me come up with an idea 
that's different, that's something that's relevant to everyone in the room. And I thought through my career pathway that started back in you know 2002 uh, when I got the job with Major League Soccer in New York and how kind of over the years I ended up working there, but then eventually moved to India and a lot of kind of what seemed like risky career moves, but they were really calculated and strategic. I wouldn't even call them risk, but just you know shifts and evolutions of my career. And I started putting all that together and it, you know, a formula came out of all of that as well, which involves the, our passions, our superpowers and our, our purpose. And essentially the book covers my own journey. I call it kind of like a career memoir, but also a lot of relevant and um, easily applicable guidance on how anybody can love their career. And at the core of it, um, and it's the number I throw out a lot, it's one lakh or 100,000 out, 100,000 is the amount of hours that um, most of us will work in our lifetime. And and it's really important that we try to enjoy and feel engaged with as many of those hours as possible. So I ultimately, it's about how do we set ourselves up to enjoy as many of those hours as we can through our professional career. Amazing. Uh, Neil, quick quick follow-up. Um, who... Who would be the ideal person to read the book? Is it uh, is it is it everyone? Or I mean, you have spec. I mean, for you, uh, who who do you really want to target uh, with, yeah. with this book? Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting you say that because when I was writing it, I thought, okay, this is going to be perfect. You know, I was deep into GISB at that point and 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 fully immersed in the sports management student kind of mentorship and guidance. I said this is going to be perfect for anybody who is looking at um, you know creating a career in sports management and then i started writing it more and i realized no like what i've put together and especially when i started interviewing people outside of sports that have also had so-called dream careers they've a lot of professional fulfillment i realized that i can write this in a way that is relevant for anybody who wants to have a dream career in any industry so in and then when my publisher read it and the like the, the chief editor they got back to me and he said you know this is for everyone, Neil. This is not just for even somebody looking for their first job. This is for the career, um, the professional who's wants to upgrade themselves in that particular industry. This is great for somebody who's looking for a career shift. And now I'm realizing after a few other of my older friends have read this, this is great for somebody who's in that process of retiring and who's thinking about that, you know, that passion project that they want to focus on in their retirement years. This would also be good for them. So I know it's a, a very kind of broad answer, but really this book is great for anybody wherever they are on their professional career pathway. Joy, um, the great Indian cricket circus, is it uh, is it like diehard cricket fans or, or you think, uh, I mean, it's going to appeal to like sports lovers in general or is it, uh, I mean, tell us a little bit about the thought process then. Who do you think will love this book? I know I will, but uh, um, uh, any anything to add there from, from your end? Yeah, so look, this is not at all for hardcore people at all. You know, it's not. I awesome. mean, there's lots there for hardcore people. Okay. So for people who, you know, like it's, you know, uh, to give you a very good example, the fact that at some point in time, uh, Mohammed Shami, the player, cricketer, the Indian cricketer, and Swami Vivekananda has played for the same cricket club is something that is of interest far beyond just cricket, you know. <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> I was just looking up somebody like a Rajiv Sardesai. Mm -hmm. And Rajiv Sardesai actually played cricket for Oxford and he pre played pretty well. So if you go and check out his scorecards, his scorecards are there. And of his eight dismissals, he scored 250s on his you know seven odd innings. Uh, he was dismissed by Derek Underwood, who was an international cricketer, Eddie Hemmings, Alan Donald, Abdul Qadir. So he's played against some pretty serious guys. And uh, so that's what I was trying to say that cricket is, see, the passion of cricket is there everywhere. So Probably India's most famous ad man today is Piyush Pandey. And Piyush Pandey started mm -hmm. playing cricket for Rajasthan. He played cricket uh, pretty seriously for Rajasthan and was a pretty decent cricketer. Played for St. Stephen's in a team where, you know, people like Kitty Azad played. Kitty Azad, of course, played for India in the 83 World Cup. Many the international cricketers played for that team. So that's what I'm saying, that cricket in, in, in India, like films, and cricket are everywhere. It's in part of every part of our society. So all I've tried to do is capture cricket wherever it has gone. You know, cricketers and films is a chapter by itself. That means not just cricketers who have participated in films, films about cricket, but also film stars who actually play a bit of cricket on the side. So all of those people are there. 
and that's just some of the things in this book amazing and 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 that's probably why it it also says amazing facts stats and everything in between uh, <laughs> awesome awesome any uh, any uh, any cool uh, anecdotes that you would want to share with us i know in the second half of of, of this uh, chat uh, we're going to open 2 minutes for for both you gentlemen to uh, to give us a quick reading but uh, joy you want to uh, tell us a little bit about the everything in between maybe something related to sports business its sponsorship endorsement i don't know any any anecdotes that you no, love i mean look, I, yeah <laughs> i'm just going through the chapters and wondering where where all i'll talk about it but <laughs> i'll just you know okay so a great example is for example that you know we think today the ipl is this really big event and you know the ipl is where indian cricketers got private teams you know where you actually had teams run by rich indian people and you know businessmen the fact of the matter is that in the early 20th century all the big maharajas had their own teams and all these guys played against each other and the stakes were serious bagging stakes maybe there was no television but uh, they used to play three four test cricketers used to play for each of these sides english test cricketers wow. used to come here and play professional cricket in india and so when we think about this concept of a private league playing against each other you think actually this need for rich i mean powerful indian people to put together their own cricket team is 100 years old and uh, they really i mean people like dennis compton and all played for the maharaja of polkar all these guys have top international cricketers have played for india even 50 60 years before the ipl started 80 years before the ipl started no i mean that's uh I, I again, I can't say this more, but um, can't wait, can't wait to get our hands on this. And and for all our listeners, in we are going to share uh, the links in our comments uh, where you can uh, get your hands on this uh, on both uh, Neil as well as Joy's book. Uh, so so make sure to do that. Uh, and um, Neil, I'm going to jump to you. Tell us, I, this is this is your second book, um, and of course the first one was focused uh, more on on the World Cup and things like that, but Uh, just want to leave the book aside but just can you tell us about the journey as an author um and mm-hmm. and and how uh, maybe some of the challenges or maybe a little bit about uh, how how you were able to kind of actually put pen to paper eventually and 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 what uh, the product is now yeah absolutely and in the journey is the right word to use for i would say the journey of a published author as well because one is to write but sure. i realized that the writing part is actually the easiest part it's the rest of it that uh and that that really kind of can be a, the challenge and you have to navigate quite a bit so you know as i was sharing earlier that um you know put together this ted talk it went pretty well i did one more of those and all of a sudden i like i realized i have a i have some semblance of uh, you know a message i want to get out in the world um and and yeah, i would like to package it the best i can so during the pandemic you know we all had a little bit more space in our lives as we were kind of um you know not going to the office every single day and i just used a little bit of my mornings and nights where i could just start writing and and this was your dream career so I, it started pouring out of me and interesting enough on my 40th birthday um my wife asked me what do i want and i you know i kind of felt like i had everything at that point but i just said you know what i really want to write this book well like i want to and i thought i'd only write one book in my life at that point i said if this is the only book i ever write in my life i want to do the best job i can and so i asked her for one of those master class um cl- courses that uh, that was offered on how to write non fiction and it was led by um taught by malcolm gladwell and i just remember the first couple of weeks of the pandemic i would just sit every morning and you know watch a chapter or two of uh, malcolm gladwell talking about how to write non fiction and then i would just start to create my own little excel sheet and and structure the book and once i structured it with the stories the concepts and kind of all in between i would just sit in the mornings and just write and then sometimes in the evening again when i get a second wind i would write again and it just came out of me in about a month and then i started doing the very vulnerable thing of asking other people in my life to read it and give me feedback and they started doing that and within a couple of months i was able to get two or three really respected people i respect and trust their opinion to come back to me and said hey it's pretty good like it needs some work but the foundations there so i thought great i have a manuscript now i just need to get a publisher and that's where it took 
a long time. It was the middle of the pandemic. Publishing houses were not as active as in there, or you know, they weren't getting, they weren't responsive. And all of a sudden, I tried everywhere in, in London, in the U.S., in India, and I just wasn't getting a response. The responses I eventually got was, "Your social media is too low, so we can't even read the manuscript." And I said, "Wow, okay." So then finally, I got an agent, uh, a person named Suhail Mathur, um from the Book Bakers. He's a literary a lit agent. And he was fantastic because when I signed on with him, he basically was pitching the book to people, giving me feedback. And while he was pitching that book, he called me one day and he said, you know, this is not about your dream career, but I got a, a, a own Books International, the ed chief editor, Shantanu Chaudhry, is he's from Bengal, very passionate about football. And he wants a book about Indian football to come out during the FIFA World Cup um, in October of 2022, October, November would you be open to writing it? It's a commission book. Um, if you write it well, you can pretty much guarantee it's going to get published. And I was like, wait, what about my other book that I love? And he, but I thought, you know what, this is a, this is too good of an opportunity to turn down. So myself and Gaurav Gala from FSDL wrote that book and that came out first. And I was recommended by a lot of published authors that said, Neil, just do the best job you can of that book, build good relations with Ohm. And at the right time, um, get ask Ohm if they would publish your other book that that's sitting in your computer, and I said okay. And the right time was at the Bang after the Bangalore Literary Festival in uh, December of of twenty twenty two. Me and Gaurav Gala were on stage with Sunil Chetri and Kunal fr um, from uh, FC, uh, from Bangalore FC. We had this fantastic talk at the center stage at the Bangalore Lit Fest, and then we went and we were signing autographs of the book with Sunil. 200 books got sold out uh, at the ballroom immediately after that. And we were kind of like rock stars for two seconds, thanks to Sunil. And um, after all that, we're sitting in the writer's lounge and I went to Shantanu and I said, Shantanu, I have this other book. Uh, would you mind um, you know, taking a look at it and maybe publishing it uh, at home? And he was in heaven because his son just got to spend all this time with Sunil. He saw who me and Kunal, or, sorry, me and Gaurav kind of are and he said, don't even think about it. We're doing it for sure. And that's how it all kind of came together. So I think it took three years to get this book published after writing it. But I could just tell you that, you know, it's it's worth the journey. Um, at the time, sometimes it'd be like, oh, my God, this is I just want to self-publish and put it out, which is not a bad thing. But I'm glad that I stuck it out. And Ohm has been nothing but um, supportive and encouraging. And they really did a good job with this. Joy, I know, I mean, uh... Like I said before, this is uh, this is not your first rodeo. You've even uh, co-authored a book with your son. Uh, tell us a little bit of a, about the author's journey or, or your journey, and and maybe some of the challenges that you faced uh, to publish not only this one but uh, multiple of the others. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, publishing was not so difficult again uh, for me because I was. I think I just spent more time in the industry before, so I was lucky. And uh, the first. Uh, the really the first book we published was actually uh, for Penguin. It was a ESPN school quiz. It was a ESPN uh, school quiz book, which was published in 2001 too, wow. which was really a collection of the questions out there. So, uh, as I said, uh, that uh, what I want to tell Neil is that you know the more you write, the easier it gets. They sort of feel that if somebody else was, you know, took you on, then you know the chances of you getting on another one is easier and better, and it it gets easier all the time. Fortunately, my last two books, one of them was on Dhoni and the other was on uh, Is This Current Indian Cricket Circus. Both of them have been very fortunate to have really great co-authors. You know, one of them, the first one I wrote with Amit, co-wrote with Amit Sena. And so much of the hard work of, you know, because if you're talking about Dhoni, there are so many angles to Dhoni. So, so much of the hard work of watching the video again, looking at the matches again, seeing the situations again was done by him, which you could discuss. And similarly, this particular book, Abhishek has been an absolute rock star because, I mean, tracing down, even if I have a story or he has a story, to trace it down every source, confirm it, find a proper source for it, put it down in the book, uh, it takes a long time. So uh, for, for non-fiction books of the type that the Great Indian Cricket Circus is, it's a lot of hard work. And I think 90% of the hard work for, in my case, was done by Abhishek. I just had a lot of fun and schmoozed my way around, but uh, <laughs> that's how life is. Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, one thing I would say to Joy's point, and also I mean, Joy's giving, I mean, he's being humble. Is you, he, 
you know, just you just sitting in a silo and then writing a book and and you know not really interacting with the world in between or before or after and then expecting you know publisher to love you. It's it's hard. And I think what Joy has done really well, and I'm learning the importance of this now is, and he had already built a very good, um, you know, a, a connection with, with people through um, Twitter and through Facebook and through TV work and everything. So, you know, already having that sort of um, respect and, uh, you know, appreciation out there and positive perception out there in the world, I think publishers, they write off that as well. And they notice that, hey, this person would be a, a good person to back. And I, I'm trying to do that now, <clears throat> excuse me, as I try to build my my brand in a way beyond kind of my small little circle. So um, I, not just because I want to publish this like me, but also I generally want to have more interactions out there in the world um, because I think, uh, you know, I want to try to make an impact out there. So I think all of it helps if anybody's a, a future author out there, start building your connections now. No, that's so true. I think I've known Joy for now, uh, like eight years, probably. And I think there's not a day that goes by that he's continuously entertaining everybody with with his stories. Uh, and and I and yeah, you just got to continuously write. No, that's uh, kudos, kudos to the both of you uh, for this. Uh, will would would you gentlemen be um, kind to us and and give us two minutes each uh, of reading? Joy, we can start with you. I'll I'll call time. And uh, yeah, the flow's yours, and you can read a little bit of wherever you want from uh, from your book. Okay. Uh, yep. I'm just I'm looking through the, all the stuff that I want to ask about, look at, look at, and I'm wondering what I should pick. And uh, there's so there's so many. I just I'm trying to find out what. So let me just try and find one chapter which I always love because uh, it's a chapter which is uh, interesting. It's called the butterfly effect. So what the butterfly effect is that things that you think are very small things, but do it totally changed cricket as we know it. And uh, it's uh, so I'll just pick up one part of it. This is uh, go for it. Couple denied food. Okay. So in 1975, a young couple there was attending a camp for budding cricketers, the Cricket Club of India in Bombay. After a grueling session in very sultry heat, the youngsters were served a meal of two dry chapatis and vegetables. And, you know, a couple is from the Punjab where they really love their rotis and have lots of them. A famished couple demanded more. When he was told that the instructions had come from KK Tarapur, who the administrator of the camp, Kapil led a small group of people to Tarapur's office. Kapil was blunt. Nobody can fill his belly with such a small serving and I'm a fast bowler. I practice a lot and I really sweat it out. And uh, Kapil never forgot Tarapur's response. He, Tarapur said, Young man, India has been playing international cricket for 40 years, but it hasn't produced a single fast bowler. Fast bowler, that's the best joke I've heard in years. So Kapil remembered that and he turned around and said, I will be India's first proper fast bowler. And obviously he took Tarapur's statement as a sort of challenge to prove that India can produce fast bowlers. And now when we have bowlers like Bumra and Siraj, it all started in the last 40 years with Kapil Dev out here. So that's one I'd like to read. Amazing. And the other is a funny one, which is uh, it'll start in a particular place and see where it ends. So one su Sunday evening in 1984, Doodarshan telecasts the classic Devanand starter guide. Of course, it's the 100th birth anniversary of Devanand just happened a few days back. While the residents of Sahitya Sahawas colony Bandra sat glued to their television sets, three boys climbed a mango tree. During their pursuit, a branch gave way and all three fell with a crash. The boys received some treatment, but the parents, the Tendulkar household, went a step further. The family decided that something had to be done about young Sachin's pent-up energy, especially during the wrong summer vacations. Ajit Tendulkar, his brother, recommended Ramakant Atrekar's cricket coaching camp, and the rest, of course, is history. So that's how you know Sachin's cricket career really started. He fell off a tree while the family was watching Guide. And they said, look, this guy is too much energy. We better get him to do something important. <laughs> amazing, amazing. And I, I can't, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the stories of, of, of so many household names uh, are, are going to be simply amazing. And, and thank you for sharing that, uh, Joy. Neil, uh, you're up. All right. <clears throat> so um, there's many personal stories um, from my life and also other people's life in the book. But I'm going to trying to pick one that I can 
get a read in, in two minutes that's relevant here. So this is from chapter three. It's the beginning of chapter three. It's called Pursue Your Passion. Um, what are you deeply interested in? That's the kind of question under the chapter heading. My happy place. Grinning like a Cheshire cat, Jim said, Neil, today is the big day. Today is the day we are going to figure out your future career. The year was 1995, and I was in the posh office of my private career counselor, Jim, in Laguna Beach, California. Like many Desi parents, my folks wanted to get ahead of the game when it came to figuring out my career and ultimately like my life's plan. They felt that the ripe old age of 15 years was just the right time to start this process. So there I was, sitting in front of Jim's large wooden desk, feeling both nervous and excited as this gentle giant smiled at me. He was holding the results of the comprehensive career aptitude test he had me take the previous week. As he handed me three file folders, I enthusiastically grabbed them from his hands and looked at the first one, which was labeled banking. It was full of stack of papers with information about how to get into banking, types of companies to work with, the salary range, what universities the best bankers graduated from, etc. I quickly glanced at the contents and then put the folder aside and less enthusiastically picked up the second one. This was labeled business analyst. I was dumbfounded at that point at this point because i didn't even know that this was a job and at the time i was not very fond of business or analysis so it seemed odd that i'd be primed for a career which combines both i did not even bother to look in the folder as i knew that the information contained inside would not interest me at all instead i started becoming aware that my stomach was beginning to knot and some sweat beads were forming on my head it was nearly the same feeling as watching my favorite team liverpool fc playing a match i felt they should easily win but, when, but then was up with one penalty shot left where a miss would mean getting knocked out of the import, important cup competition. But my situation required some serious praying, as this could impact the rest of my life. I reluctantly pinked in the third folder, hoping that it would say something of interest to me. The word accountant showed up, and I threw the folders back onto Jim's table with more force than appropriate, wondering if his stupid career test suggestion machine was broken. Mom quickly picked up the folders and said with full affection and slight desperation to ensure something good came out of the $1,500 she spent on Jim's counseling session. Son, which of these options do you want to choose? I did not answer because I was no longer there. Well, physically I was, but mentally I had checked out. I retreated to a time a few weeks earlier when I was in Denmark, participating in an international football tournament called the Dana Cup. I was not just remembering the goals I scored in the matches my club team Orange Coast United won, I was deeply engrossed in reminiscing about the conversations I had with teenagers from all over the world and how I felt at one with myself, my teammates and the other footballers while we watched the top flight European match on a small black and white television. The pure joy I expect, experienced over the week being around the sport I loved. And yeah, I was jolted out of this beautiful memory with the sound of Jim's deep and slightly irritated voicing, Neil, which career option do you want to work towards moving forward? And suddenly from a place beyond my conscious mind, I replied, Jim, I don't want to be a banker, business analyst, or accountant. I only want to work in football. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, the tension in the room dissipated as my mom and Jim burst out laughing. In response, I simply closed my eyes, traveled back to my happy place at the football tournament in Denmark. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's a, a part. It keeps going about how I realize that my passion is completely football. And um, ultimately, this is what I want to do. I Amazing! I, I love I love that you throw your personal stories in there and and, and open your heart out uh, to to the readers uh, and and that's I guess what's what's important and and that's what what really uh, is going to be able to make people understand what you're what you're talking about. Um, so amazing. Uh, gentlemen, uh, this has been absolutely wonderful. I am going to ask you one uh, last question, but for our listeners, uh, amazing uh, to have you here this wonderful evening. Uh, this LinkedIn audio series is brought to you by Sports Kida, business of sports. Feel free uh, to follow the page for all the updates. Uh, we are doing this on a weekly basis. Some fantastic, fantastic speakers and panels uh, coming up. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. Uh, Joy, Neil, thank you for the time. Um, I would love for you to throw to our listeners yeah, maybe I, one my last question is to Samir, or uh, anything you'd like to uh, add maybe, maybe joy maybe, talk about uh, maybe talking about uh, i like the concept you're talking about commentators or you can, pundits uh, as, as we call it i'm pretty sure you must be having some world. fun stories from there but uh, uh, any, anything is, uh, any last the, uh, the technology uh, will reach to add all for sports, our listeners uh, which are about right now your wonderful physical league 
how do you see the growth of no, the no I, 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 uh, I will not I, and for so once i will not go towards uh, again because i find the technology you know, there's, versus there's technology among all these we can read up on i just want yeah. to tell people that at the end of the day i worked with uh, many people and you know cricketers are special uh, because to be the top 11 in a billion people is not easy uh, both male and female it's extremely difficult but some of the journeys that are outside that have been equally amazing and somebody like a harsha bogle is an inspiration to all of us and the way he's just gone about doing his stuff and i was just today i was recording some uh, video for somebody uh, just before the world cup and i heard that harsha had just finished his game yesterday the day before come back run in gone in and done something and today was in the studio recording four things so at the end of the day a man who's uh, you know just to neil's point a man who's spent 40 years in broadcasting doing everything since 1983 he's been broadcasting at some level or the other still has the passion to want to go into a studio and do stuff on the one day that he's got off just before a busy world cup tells you exactly how much passion there is in sport so yeah i just want to leave people with that uh, it may not pay as much as other professions but uh, the rewards of working in sport are are just infinitely more and that's all i'd leave them with completely agree uh neil yeah i think i think joy just kind of um supported my book which is great right there with his it is lovely story and sharing um i i'm also not going to go into an anecdote i want to you know use this opportunity to say that it's like you know those 100,000 hours let's make them count and sometimes you know if we're looking at the traditional pathways i'm not saying they're wrong it's just that if we're doing it for the reasons that are you know outside of our inner voice or inner calling it may not always be the most fulfilling and you can't predict how your journey is going to be so you look at what joy has done in his career i mean he's had been a pioneer in a in a path breaker you know a path creator in so many different parts of the sports media and entertainment world yeah. and he probably couldn't have I, predicted I all that when you're younger uh, even myself you know sport. being so a 22 year old in california world, working for mls i thought i'd probably be in new york city uh, in mls school, the rest of my uh, life i never uh, thought that 15 years ago i'd move to india and, uh, get to work in the you know be a ceo of a club and a football consultant and now set up a sports management institute and be a life coach so we don't know how our journey is going to go but we just have to keep looking at our passion our purpose and our strengths and then the people around us and the environments we can impact and just keep going and as it joy said it may not pay the same as a you know investment banker or other fields but the rewards of waking up every day excited to be at work with the people you get to work with and the impact you get to make on the sports industry is or any other industry you're in love with is is priceless honestly and so um i'm the book so talks about that and it helps anybody um wherever they are in their career even if they haven't started working yet figure out how to get there amazing and 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 rightly rightly said i'm uh, me personally i'm absolutely honored to uh to have both of you here and it has been an absolute absolute pleasure i know the conversation will continue uh and until uh, i read and get my hands on both your books uh, see you gentlemen and all our listeners on the other side thank you so much arup Thanks, Thanks Aru. Cheers, Neil. Lovely talking to you. You as well.